Scientists are up in arms over the latest images of a small planet at the very edge of the solar system. It's shocking. Something is wrong with Pluto. Why is the dwarf planet suddenly showing unprecedented activity on its surface? Could it be home to life after all? And what's the deal with the moon Charon, which may not be a real moon at all? Pluto is a special case in the world of planets, a real oddball and tiny. Located far out in the solar system, it orbits the sun in almost complete darkness. Until 2015, we didn't have a single clear image of this planet. We knew it existed, but we didn't know what was going on on this planet. How could we? Even Hubble could only provide blurry images, and even the best telescopes could not show the tiny planet in sharp focus. All knowledge was based on calculations and a few vague assumptions. NASA could no longer maintain this state of affairs. We urgently needed to know more about this planet. The New Horizons probe was launched in 2006, and shortly afterwards, the unbelievable happened. At the International Assembly of Astronomers and Cosmologists, it was discussed whether Pluto might not be a planet at all. The conclusion was reached that Pluto is a trans-Neptunian object, or a dwarf planet, and it was simply removed from the ranks of the major planets. Since then, we have somehow missed Pluto, and it's hard to imagine school children today memorizing the planetary series without Pluto. Yet Pluto is a fascinating frozen world, and now it's finally showing scientists its true face. Is Pluto a double planet? Would you believe me if I told you that almost everything we thought we knew about Pluto was wrong? The images from New Horizons quickly showed that something was wrong with Pluto, or rather, what researchers claimed about Pluto was wrong. New Horizons also revealed Pluto's gigantic moon for the first time. Charon, Pluto's moon, is as tiny as the planet itself, but in relation to the size of its planet, Charon is a true giant and the relatively largest moon in the solar system. Take a look at Pluto. The planet is around 5.5 times smaller than the Earth and is only two-thirds the diameter of the Earth's moon. Charon is about half the size of Pluto. If we were to hold the two celestial bodies together, their combined diameter would be just as large as the USA from the west coast to the east coast. That's really not much for a planet and a moon. Pluto and Charon are truly not a normal pairing of a planet and a moon. Planets and moons have a common center of gravity, which scientists call the Berry Center, and this is normally always located in the interior of the planet. But Pluto and Charon dance together around a point that is not in Pluto's interior. These unusual properties make Pluto and Charon a galactic phenomenon that only occurs once in the entire solar system. Another remarkable detail of this duo is the mutually locked rotation. While most moons always point one side towards their planet, Pluto and Charon break this pattern. Like cosmic lovers who never lose sight of each other, they always show each other the same faces. Looking up from the surface of Pluto, Charon would constantly remain at a fixed point in the sky and vice versa. But there are even more curiosities about this pair. Pluto and Charon orbit each other exactly every 6.4 days. Let's imagine that there are people on Pluto and Charon. The people on the side of the planet and moon facing each other would be able to see each other but the people living on the other side of the two celestial bodies would not see each other. They wouldn't even know there was a planet or a moon until they visited the other side and would probably be quite surprised. Due to the size and proximity of the two, a large celestial body would suddenly appear in the immediate vicinity when crossing the line of sight. Nevertheless, these considerations are of course purely theoretical because there are no humans on either Pluto or Charon and the two orbit each other in such darkness that hypothetical inhabitants would probably not be able to recognize either the opposite moon or the planet. Strange idea, isn't it? Due to the small difference in size, the strange position of the center of gravity, and the unusual rotation, scientists now assume that Pluto and Charon are not exactly one planet with its moon, but a double planetary system. Charon could have been an object of the Kuiper Belt and was then captured by the somewhat larger Pluto and bound to its orbit. Pluto is pure unconventionality. Pluto is truly a quirky planet. Most planets have poles that point roughly upwards and out of their orbits. Pluto, however, is unique in that it rotates sideways. In simple terms, this means that Pluto's axis of rotation does not point in the same direction as most other planets, but is shifted sideways. 
it is like Pluto is lying on its side. Only Uranus shows similar rotational behavior in the solar system. Pluto's 248-year-long orbit is highly elliptical and has an eccentricity of 0.25, which means that Pluto's distance from the Sun is only 29.7 astronomical units, bringing it periodically even closer to the Sun than Neptune, which is much further inwards. Pluto's and Neptune's orbits therefore intersect, but the two will not collide because their orbits are in exact resonance. If Neptune has orbited the Sun three times, Pluto will have completed two orbits. Neptune and Pluto are therefore also performing a perfectly coordinated cosmic dance. Most planets orbit the Sun close to the same plane, but Pluto's orbit is inclined by up to 17.14 degrees in relation to this plane. This is the highest inclination in the solar system, and only Mercury follows in second place with an inclination of around 7 degrees. As the mass of Pluto is only 1 455th that of the Earth, you might think that its gravity would also be 455 times less. But that's not true. A person on Pluto would weigh 1 15th of what they weigh on Earth. A trip to Pluto would therefore be like a successful diet and heavy people would feel very fluffy and light on this planet. As a rocky planet, Pluto is a real speciality. Because as you know, it would certainly never be possible for a human to land on Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, or Neptune. The gas and ice giants are too inhospitable. The gravity is too high or better, these planets probably don't offer a solid surface at all. What looks like a surface to us consists mainly of gases and liquid substances. Pluto, on the other hand, despite all its unconventionality, is also down to earth and offers a solid surface throughout, which has now particularly surprised researchers. Pluto's surface moves. Although Pluto is named after the god of the underworld, it is the only known planet with a heart. The white, heart-shaped surface is divided into two sections. One is rather flat and the other quite rugged. Pluto's beautiful but rather icy heart stretches over hundreds of kilometers, and researchers have been puzzling over how this unusual shape was formed since its discovery. On the left, we have a large plane of frozen nitrogen and methane, known as Sputnik Planitia. On the right, mountains and impressive ice volcanoes rise up in the Tambo region. The observations of Sputnik Planitia, and especially of the heart, were made possible by the New Horizons probe. In fact, we have only known about this heart since the NASA probe visited Pluto and provided us with the first images. A lot has happened since the first visit by New Horizons, and not so long ago the James Webb Telescope took another look and discovered something amazing. Many of the bizarre ice formations had moved. The changes that had taken place in just over five years were clearly visible. The movement of the ice layers is the first evidence of complex geological processes beneath Pluto's surface. Presumably, there is some kind of melting and freezing cycle behind the effects, and this means no less than that the icy substance on Pluto is continuously in motion. Calculations on the possible causes of the movements have shown that a liquid ocean may lie hidden beneath Pluto's ice, making Pluto a candidate for the discovery of life in the solar system. Who would have thought that Pluto, which was considered boring and dead, would suddenly become a geologically highly active planet and one that may be home to the simplest of creatures? We will only know more about this when we have sent new probes to Pluto and the other rocky and ice worlds. In the coming years, probes will fly to the icy moons Enceladus and Ganymede. If researchers find traces of life in the suspected oceans under the thick ice there, there will certainly be a new mission to Pluto. Whether these fascinating discoveries will pave Pluto's way back into the ranks of the main planets remains to be seen. It would be desirable because many people miss Pluto and don't want to accept the fact that this cute guy is no longer a real planet. Pluto was Planet X. Did you know that Pluto was discovered when researchers were searching for the mysterious Planet X? Percival Lowell was an American businessman, author, and astronomer born in 1855. He founded the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, and researched the discovery of other planets. At the time, researchers realized that there must be more planets because of the crooked orbits of Neptune and Uranus. The two planets are dependent on a previously invisible additional body 
which must be very large. Even then, this undiscovered celestial body was called Planet X, and Lowell financed three large-scale searches. Percival Lowell was no longer alive when Pluto was discovered, but the actual discoverer, Clyde Tombaugh, was a young astronomer at the Lowell Observatory. He discovered Pluto on February 18, 1930, by comparing photographic plates taken on different days to track the movement of the newly discovered celestial body. Clyde Tombo was thus the first American to discover a planet. Before his employment at the Lowell Observatory, he was an amateur astronomer. The young astronomer only made the discovery because he noticed a tiny speck of light moving slowly against the fixed pattern of stars in the constellation Gemini. At the time, Tombo thought his discovery was the mysterious planet X, and Pluto was also named that until it was given its own name. Only much later did it turn out that Pluto was far too small to be responsible for the orbital shifts of Uranus and Neptune. Since then, it has been clear that there must be another large planet somewhere in the solar system, but it has still not been discovered. Pluto has experienced turbulent ups and downs since then. At first, as a newly discovered planet, it was naturally a superstar. Then, it lagged behind the other planets for a long time because it was never visited by a probe of its own. We hardly knew anything about it, and so it was downgraded by astronomers due to its size. One of the reasons for this was the numerous newly discovered mini-planets in the Kuiper Belt. Experts suspect that there are dozens of these miniature planets far out in the solar system, and because Pluto resembles them more than the inner planets, it was declared a trans-Neptunian object together with these numerous miniature planets. Pluto's moon Charon was discovered in 1978 at the Naval Observatory Flagstaff Station by astronomers James Christie and Robert Harrington. The observatory is located just around the corner from the Lowell Observatory, where Pluto was discovered. The two astronomers weren't actually looking for a moon. They were studying Pluto's orbit around the sun, and that's when they first noticed the moon. In mythology, Charon is the ferryman in Pluto's underworld realm. He carries souls across the river Acheron. Subscribe to the channel now and never miss a new video.